Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Wiki Weekends, where we wind up a wiki, we take a deep dive and we keep swimming until we find something fun to talk about. I'm your host for this episode, Lucas Holland, and as always, I am joined by the forever lovely Carl Smallwood. Hell yeah. Hell goddamn yeah. And Carl, are you ready to talk about a vampire? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Which one? Which one? We're going to be talking about the vampire that kills other vampires, Blade. Oh, that's okay. I thought you were going to say Morbius, and I was really all set. Well, I mean, if they released Morbius twice, we can release Morbius videos twice, right? <laughs> they should release it again. I really well, want to like... talk at some point about, like, the Morbius from the, the Spider-Man animated series with, like, the hand suckers. <laughs> so fucking dumb, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we're not talking about that sticky hands today, Carl. We're talking about someone, you know, a lot cooler than that, who is Blade. God, Blade is so cool, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the fact that... Have you seen that they've, again, just had to redo that entire Blade movie? Like, Masha oh, Ali's like... Oh, no. They've not shot a single second of footage. Oh. He's like, all you need to do is give him a pair of sunglasses... And having beat up vampires for 95 minutes. How is this hard? <laughs> like, just put some thumping techno in the background as he just does cool martial arts moves to vampires. Yeah, even with the script that was like Blade Trinity, Blade is still cool in that movie because it's fucking Blade. It's not hard to make Blade cool. Never forget in that movie. <laughs> Wesley Snipes was so annoyed with how shit the script was that <laughs> he didn't open his eyes for a shot that called him to open his eyes. So they CGI'd his eyes onto oh, his I eyes. I forgot that. Because <laughs> like Wesley Snipes like, this script fucking sucks. I'm not doing it. I mean, it, they weren't wrong, were they? That script it, was oh. not great. The fact he was so high that they just used the same shot of him responding to everything. Because <laughs> he was so high. He just won't open his eyes, Lucas. I respect it. Like, what are you going to do? CGI my eyes? No, yeah, we will. We, will. <laughs> it was so we fucking bad. will. Since so these were, I think they told him, like, we've got enough footage of you just standing around as Blade, where we can just film reaction shots of you being Blade <laughs> and just cobble up. Movie. I kind of want to see that cut of the movie. Oh, I'd love to see that. Of just, like, the thing where it's, like, clearly they didn't have them for very long and they keep just reusing the same shots. Yeah, like, the Simpsons joke, isn't it? Of, like, oh, without Millhouse, we can just use existing footage and just cobble it together anyway. It looks like we're in trouble. For that boy. Jiminy Jellicker's radioactive man. We'll have to fight our way out. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> There's a, a great episode of Community where Ken Jong's character becomes famous and he's like in the talks to do like a Steven Spielberg movie and I'll it's like, well I did shoot like three scenes with him for this movie that I was working on. I'm like, great. We can take that footage and make an entire 90 minute movie out of those like three minutes of footage you've got of him, right? I need. I need to know. Where your friends are, huh? Yeah. I'm sorry, but you're not gonna like this. Your friends have been taken prisoner by Master. Master. Dracula. They do it all the time, though. It's like um, the first Leprechaun movie. Mm. Like, it's like Jennifer Aniston was in it. So, like, now when you go look at that movie, any poster. Or any like DVD or Blu-ray cover, it's just Jennifer Aniston front and center. Oh god! She was like, she was just in it before she was big. I always find it funny when it's just like, oh yeah, here's a character that's like prominent in all of the marketing material, and they're actually in the movie for like one fucking scene. But it's because they got famous after the fact. It's like, fuck it, we can put them on the poster. <laughs> Talking about Blade, the name Blade is Eric Brooks, which is you know a lot less cool than being called Blade. So I see why they go around with that. Just the fact he's just <laughs> what's your superpower? Has to stab vampires with a knife. <laughs> ah, blade. Yes, straight to the point. I see. Ha ha. It's like you know, Eric Brooks is fine, but it's a lot cooler to just walk around with fucking shades and call yourself Blade. It still cracks me up. I'm in the comics. I know was like a whole like vampire, 
like subplot and there's other characters mm-hmm. who hunt the vampires with blade but in my head it's just the only person who cares about vampires is blade and no like just captain america just keeps getting phone calls like please help me with the vampires like who this <laughs> like the avengers don't care it's like there's vampires everywhere you yeah. guys like they're having raves underground guys there's that many of them If it's not a Nazi I can punch in the face, it's not my problem. It's not my problem. Vampire Nazis, though, then we'll talk. Oh, God. Got a quote here from Blade. Just, so how many times do I have to put you in the ground? Do you know what that is? That's like the, the fucking director of the Blade movie, isn't it? <laughs> Just, how many directors Stop do we need it. to, like, get in on this project? How many failed projects of Blade are we going to get going at the same time? Because... There's already, like, the game that they announced before they've basically started making the game. There's the movie they announced before they basically started making the movie. Do you ever see there was, like, that PS2-era Blade video game? Where, like, (laughs) they didn't put a jump button in? I think, or I think the jump button was, like, R2 or something like that because they didn't realise you needed to jump, so at the last possible second they just put one random button be jump. Oh, man. I didn't even realise there was like a Blade video game that existed. It sucks. Don't play it. One of the reasons I put Blade on the list was because I tried out a bit of uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns, which is just oh, like we've made XCOM combined with Marvel and cards, and I was like, that sounds rad. And then the Midnight Suns are like mostly characters that you've never heard of. Just goobers. They're cool goobers though, and Obviously, Blade is just, like, the noticeable one out of them, and you've got Ghost Rider, but it was, like, the new Ghost Rider. Oh, like, um, uh, Daniel Ketch or whatever it is. No, like, Robbie Reyes, I think his name oh, is. Oh, Robbie Reyes, okay. Um, but Johnny Blaze is the first character you see in that game, and it's old Johnny Blaze that is, like, presumably still got some level of Ghost Rider powers because he shoots, like, a flaming gun, but yeah. he's like, oh, I'm so fucking done with all of you and just pisses off. Hell's not coming. It's already here. You're welcome, Robo Man. I still think my favourite Ghost Rider moment is where, like, he gives Daredevil the cold shoulder in, like, a team up. Mm. And Daredevil's like, What's your problem, man? Like, we've never met. And it's like, I should be called Daredevil. <laughs> he should but be, I, like. I'm the former motorcycle stunt rider. Yeah. I should be called Daredevil, not you. And Daredevil's like, that's a good point. I'm sorry, Ghost Rider. <laughs> and speaking of aliases, Carl, we have some code names and hopeful band names here from Blade. You tell me some fucking names for Blade. Please tell me there's one like when he was like, my little kid's like Baby Blade, like, just like Dagger. I mean, similar, because one okay. of his code names is Switchblade. <laughs> <laughs> that's so dumb, I love it. It's like, oh, what was what was young Blade? Oh, he's a little switchblade. Before he got his katanas. <laughs> yeah, he's just like um, Ellie's switchblade from Last of Us. <laughs> Other code names he has here are Ronin. Of course, like, everyone that's got a sword has been Ronin at some point. Yeah, it's like either you were Ronin or Venom for a little bit. Yeah, or had the Phoenix Force, of course. This is like the, the classic are like, are you the good character that's had the Phoenix Force or the bad character that's had Venom? Which one are you? Yeah. Of course, Spider Hero. What? Yeah, let's just double check what who is Spider Hero. Like, yeah, Eric Brooks, Spider Hero. Did he just become Spider-Man for a little bit? Because I know like, a lot of characters stand in for Spider-Man when he's got like alimony payments or whatever. This is very weird, because when I click on the thing for Spider Hero... It then comes up with a page for Eric Brooks Earth 616, which is the page I'm already on. It just loops me back round. You know what? It doesn't matter. Keep going. <laughs> so who is Spider Hero? Daywalker, Dampier, Edge, of course, you know, during his famous wrestling days where he just became Edge for a bit. Yeah, and then he joined a metal band. That kind of sucks. Did Edge join a metal band? I think it was either Edge or Christian started like a metal band and it sucks ass. Well, surely Christian started a Christian rock band. No, uh, no, I'm sorry. We'll talk about wrestling one day. Sure. Yeah, we will. Uh, Hannibal Francis Frank Blade, and then of course, uh, at some point, he was the Sorcerer Supreme. <laughs> yeah, why not? The thing is, that if I, if he was the Sorcerer Supreme, all he needs to do is just cast like light magic, which is like the most. When you ever play like a 
a game with mages. Like, usually the simplest spell is just create a ball of light. Mm -hmm. That'd be the most powerful spell for someone hunting vampires, right? <laughs> just shoot out light. It depends. Is it, like, light from a light bulb, or is it light from the sun? Oh, that is the difference. Yeah, vampires only like light from the sun. Oh, they don't like light from the sun. Mm -hmm. It's also called Subject A A1 and Wesley, which I'm sure is just a reference to the fact that Wesley Snipes played him. There are worse things out tonight than vampires. Like what? Like me. Do you see that Wesley Snipes every now and again just like tweets out Make America Blade again? <laughs> like, he wants to be played so much. I mean, I would want to be played again, but I don't think I'd want to be played again after Blade Trinity. I think he should, because it'd be funny. It would be very funny. Like, they should definitely have him as, like, some kind of cameo of, like, Blade's brother or something like that, or just his cousin or whatever. You should look in the mirror and just see Wesley Snipes. <laughs> but, like, for one scene, and then he just, yeah. he doubles back and it's just the well, He's a vampire, right? He's, like, well, he's wait, half what? vampire, so he won't have a reflection. So he should do a thing of looking in the mirror and be Wesley Snipes, and it'll be a window and it's Wesley Snipes at the other side. <laughs> that's the joke, right? Because he has, like, be that's the, he has all the powers of a vampire, but none of the weaknesses. That's his whole deal. Well, we will get into that, obviously, because, yeah, they are the Daywalker. But just some physical characteristics. They are male, six foot two. Uh, 215 pounds or 97.52 kilos, brown eyes, a black hair, and then unusual features, sharp maxillary canine fangs. At one point during his career, Blade possessed several unique black tattoos which ran along the back of his neck and shoulders. He also does not cast a reflection, just like you would expect from a vampire. Oh man, his father Lucas. I am his father Carl, I didn't know this. But yeah, yeah. Cause he was like, you see, his, uh, in the story of Blade, it's like his mum was pregnant with him and she got bit by a vampire, which makes him like technically like, a naturally born vampire. She's like weird hybrid vampire physiology. Well, we'll get into that here of just the history of his early life. Eric Brooks was born in Soho, London on the 24th of October 1929. His father, Lucas Cross, a member of the secret society, the Order of Tyranna, sent his pregnant wife Tara to England before he was taken prison in Latveria. Latveria's Doctor Doom's country, right? Yeah, just Doctor Doom's like, I'm taking this vampire prisoner, <laughs> fuck you. There she took the name Vanessa Brooks and found shelter with brothel owner Madame Vanity. What a name. That's a good name, right? For someone who's Madame a brothel Vanity. owner as well, Madame Vanity, who was another member of the Order of Tyranna. Experiencing labour complications, Tara was forced to seek a doctor's assistance, but oh no, the doctor, Deacon Frost, was actually a ravenous vampire and feasted on the woman as she gave birth. Can like, we past... talk about how, like, uh, if you're a vampire, that is such a good fucking cover. And I think we talked about it when we talked about Morbius once of. Morbius is such a fucking idiot. He's a doctor. How is he, like, out... Why is his solution? I'll go hunt criminals for blood. You're a doctor. Just do a fucking study on blood, moron. <laughs> like, literally ask for blood donations. It's like you're in a perfect position to just sit there and go, I'm going to take, like, a donation of blood from you as a sample. And even then, you could take a blood sample out of, like, a blood do donation and still do the work so it doesn't look weird either. What an idiot. Start going around asking for blood bags, god I know the the we got comments like that some things like that do happen in Marvel with vampires and shit, but it doesn't make it obvious in any of the stuff that I've seen about Morbius, which admittedly are not the best representations of Morbius. One of the cool things about the Blade movies is like just the world building. Mm -hmm. Like they say like there's blood banks that are just run by vampires. Yeah. And like they just have like we'll pay you blood. We'll pay for your blood, and we'll pay above, like, you know, the rate that they would from, like, you know, a hospital or something like that. And they have that, like, homeless guy in, like, the second one who's like, yeah, they, you, you can just, like, bring it in in a jar, they don't care. And he's just got a jar of blood <laughs> that he's selling to the vampire. And the vampires buy it, but then they say to that guy, oh, you have very rare blood. He's like, is that a bad thing? It's like, well, it is for you, because, like, rare blood to a vampire is, like, you know, like a really rare vintage of wine or something. But it turns mm. out he's an evil super vampire who feeds another vampires. But it's not the idea that they have just, yeah, just we, have, we run a blood bank. Mm -hmm. Why would we go out? Like, people, we don't need to hunt people. They bring it to us. Yeah, literally. That's the thing. You don't need to pay people much to, like, outbid blood donations. Because usually blood donations are free, Carl. It's usually like you know, $10 or something like that, like selling plasma or blood. It's like, it's not much. It's like a token amount. Do they actually donate to people for that? Like, give money away for that? Because I thought it was just free donations. It depends. Right. I think in the UK it's free. 
Although I think at one point in history you used to get a pint of Guinness in some places, so they say it replaces the iron you lost giving blood. I was going to say, I got like a cookie for my blood sugar levels, but I didn't get any yeah. money out of it. Have I been ripped off? In a, some states in America will buy it off you. The enzymes uh, uh, altered the baby, which was blade, and went into the infant's bloodstream, making him tainted by a vampire's kiss, but not converted. In other words, he is a half human, half vampire, which is a dampier, which I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And one thing I wasn't aware of, obviously it says he was born in like 1929. Yeah. But then uh, it does say that he was in World War II. Of course. So, Every Marvel character was, but somehow they didn't stop the war. Yeah. That's, that's, right. The problem with Marvel, having like a history that's parallel to our own is, if you had superheroes running around you in World War II, how the fuck did the Nazis get as far as they did? It's one of those, I guess, if you have the explanation that the Nazis also had someone like Red Skull on their side. But, you I know, guess. it's like, oh, well, we secretly had captain america and blade and all these other people but they also had hydra with super abilities and all of that you know the space stone and all that jazz or whatever it is in the, the so comics i feel like if blade was knocking about in world war ii and just told him hitler's a vampire he'd have gone and got him right <laughs> well in 1943 when he um joined a secret secret invaders mission on the irish sea it's like that means he's 14. It's like, I don't know how well trained and equipped. Is that when he was Switchblade? Just a little 14 <laughs> little, year old blade. little mini blade. Ha, ha, ha. They, they apparently found a U666, which was a Nazi U boat being possessed by Mephisto. <laughs> and it's like, of course, yeah, sure. That's the thing, Mephisto was on the Nazi side, so. So, you know what? Like, another reason to hate Mephisto. Yeah, that's the thing. We don't know whether Mephisto was on the Nazi side, because that's what, like, the one sentence it gives us. Was it just he possessed war machines to, you know, use for his own bidding, or was he literally just like this Hitler guy seems pretty cool? Or was he just doing it to sow discord and disharmony across the world so he can make more of his deals? Exactly, yes. That's the thing. Surely, uh, I know obviously they probably don't lean into putting Hitler directly in the comments very often, at least not anymore. <laughs> he was in them, though. Do, yes, like, yes. Do, do you know he came back as a character called the Hate Monger who had a oh. beam that made you racist? He just had you a know. laser beam that made you racist. Yeah, because I have heard of Hate Monger before. Yeah, I think he called it Twitter. <laughs> what? <laughs> just, oh, just set up, swing. Oh, set dear. up and swing. I just love the idea though that, like, yeah, obviously, as I say, I don't think many modern comics are actually putting Hitler physically in them anymore. But like, they should. What at, at any point did Mephisto just turn up to Hitler and do a deal with Hitler? I'm sure that's got to have happened at some point, right? Uh, the comics in the like, you know, the forty, they just didn't care. Like I said yeah. that one of like just Cap like Captain America just socks on the fucking jaw. I mean, we've talked about in the past like how many cartoons were literal propaganda. The comic books were the same, right? Yep. They literally had comic books being like the Nazis are bad guys. Everyone like pay attention. It's always worth as well pointing out the context for that famous Captain America one. If that was released before America joined the war. And they actually had actual Nazis outside of Marvel headquarters looking to beat up the author and artist behind it. And apparently the artist went downstairs to beat the fuck out of them. <laughs> and they ran away. <laughs> and of course, Carl, it would not be a Marvel wiki if we didn't get to the powers and abilities section over here. I just want to know, like, how, how powerful is this, 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 this man, this bled? Well, it does have the power grid here for Blade, but it doesn't have one for Switchblade. Or Spider Hero. Little Baby Blade. Power Grid is on a scale of 1 to 7. 1 is roughly human. 7 is near godlike. And it's on like an exponential scale. Um, but his intelligence is a 2. His strength is a 4. His speed is a 2. His durability is a 4. Energy projection, just a 1. A little 1. And then his fighting skills are a 5. And yeah, as, as well as having his like vampiric uh, physiology, it's just fighting skills is Blade's main deal. I feel like his intelligence should be a bit higher just because he's like technically like a hundred years old. I guess that's why it's a two, right? Rather than a one. But he still feels like, especially his knowledge of the occult and the arcane, mm -hmm. seems like he'd be like near unparalleled. You would think Marvel. he's probably more intelligent than two considering they became Sorcerer Supreme at some point, yeah. 
Also, his fighting skills being a five. I know that's like close to the top, but Wolverine's a seven. And he's like, okay, Wolverine like learned every martial art, but he's not fought vampires. Oh, to be fair, Wolverine has probably fought fucking vampires. <laughs> I'm let's, sure Wolverine's let's be honest, he probably has, many right? Vampires. When does a Wolverine start putting like silver on his claws to start going fighting like supernatural <laughs> beings? What's the like, energy projection being a one? Like I've seen that fucking shotgun he does in like that first Blade movie. His energy projection is <laughs> at least a five. With how, like, with how much he's wheel, like he's like swinging that shotgun around like an absolute boss. God damn it! He has a lot of just the generic pile of the power set of like superhuman um, strength. Speed, agility, stamina, durability, like the classic just we're a superhero with buffed physical abilities power set, of course. And then um, he has some Dampier physiology, which is a human vampire hybrid. And that just gives him like extra supernatural senses and resistance to aging and stuff like that. So he has superhuman senses, superhuman smelling and hearing. <laughs> Which, I don't know why that's split out from superhuman senses, but, you know. I guess his smelling must be, like, more just refined than his other senses. Although, like, the fact he... I think his sight needs mention, right? Because he can see in the dark. Well, that's the thing. It says under superhuman senses that he has a sense of sight and hearing that are heightened to levels comparison to those being possessed by true vampires. But then his superhuman smelling is separated out and... It does say that Jen Walters likened his olfactory senses to that of Wolverine. Wolverine's like super, like Wolverine's like on that power of like a wolf or something, right? or a bloodhound. So he basically can track people other miles. Means that they've basically got the same ability as like a fucking sniffing dog, yeah. Yeah. So if he's close to like Wolverine, then that's pretty good. And then obviously he has like regeneration, advanced longevity, and immunity to vampire vulnerabilities, which is kind of the main strength that he has in terms of when he's fighting other vampires, he can use the weaknesses of vampires against them. Say, yeah, it probably doesn't help him when he's fighting anyone else. I think the only person that he'd probably come into advantage is probably fighting Daredevil, because he's Catholic. <laughs> yeah, true. And what, what, what's like, your favourite like vampire weakness, then? Because like, vampires are some like, pretty silly. I like the one of like they can't come into your house unless you invite them. Oh, I forget about that one, yeah. It's a it's a classic one, right? They're not allowed in your house unless you specifically say they're allowed. Mm -hmm. I just like the silly one of them just not liking garlic or being like weak to garlic garlic hurts the other one that i like is um they have the overwhelming urge to count so a good uh -huh. way to stop a vampire is like you throw like a handful of rice or beans on the floor and they have to count them <laughs> this is like oh yeah you know if you throw a vampire in the sun and burn them to death that's one thing but like imagine just cooking them a meal and poisoning them to death with garlic like oh no <laughs> Where's my EpiPen? But then what you've done is you do it on a blade, put garlic in your EpiPen. It's <laughs> just <laughs> more garlic. That's the thing. That's do you think the... there are any vampires in Italy? Do you think just Italy has no vampires? Because it's just so fucking religious and like they love garlic that much. That's true. Yeah. Just that's their weak spot. That's why they just like they're all in America just avoiding like the, the Pope. Just they stay away from away. New Jersey though. We're all the Italian Americans. Like Tony <laughs> Soprano could always beat up a vampire, I bet. Because, like, is that a way that Blade could just take out a vampire? Is just, like, host a dinner for all the vampires and put garlic in the meal, and then he's so like... So what he should do is he should just go get, like, a priest to bless the entire water supply in New York. <laughs> so then every time a vampire takes a shower, they just melt. He just he's like talking to Daredevil, like, can't you get your priest to do it, mate? Like, you've got, no. you've got these connections, come on. Just all you need to do is you go up into the sky and get Storm ordained as a minister and get to literally bless the rains <laughs> so just make it rain just holy water are you so just trying to do a toto of I was a little the bit, rains but also Blade is an idiot like, actually to be fair though is that a weakness because Marvel um, vampires might not necessarily like adhere to so what are the weaknesses of vampires in Marvel Universe crosses and running water don't do dicks or forget what you've seen in the movies you use a stake silver or sunlight according to this little paragraph here about him being immune to these vulnerabilities uh, Blade is unaffected by direct exposure to sunlight. Classic. Most vampires are either rendered comatose during the daylight hours or are quickly incinerated when exposed directly to sunlight. Then it also says that they're highly allergic to silver because of its metal's purity. mystical purity. Which so, is true. Um, silver historically is seems very pure metal. Um, silver nitrate, for example, is very often put into bandages because it um, uh, sterilizes. 
Mm-hmm. And it does say here that, like, silver blades or bullets are capable of killing vampires, and if it doesn't kill them, it does, like, slow down their regeneration and healing abilities a lot as well. That looks like it just has that, yeah. He has, like, the silver, like, um, uh, stakes and stuff, doesn't he, in the blade movies. Mm-hmm. Which always looks super fucking cool. Yeah, I think normally, like, all of his blades are just imbued with silver and stuff, just... Because it's not going to make them less effective against most other enemies, but it's going to fuck it's up vampires. It's still going to hurt, right? If he shoots yeah. you with a bullet, it doesn't matter if the bullet's made of silver or, it's a, or any other metal, it's still going to fucking hurt. <laughs> exactly. So if he stabs yeah. you with a stake, it's still, I'm still pretty sure most people die if you hit them in the heart with a piece of metal. The last thing here is just, he's also immune to the effects of religious icons such as crucifixes, whereas vampires are rendered almost powerless when confronted by them. Here's the thing, right? Blade. You know vampires exist. Tell them to Tony mm. Stark. Say, Tony Stark, do you know that thing in Rio de Janeiro? Christ the Redeemer. <laughs> Build one of them on top of, like, you know, Stark Tower. No vampires. That's why they have to be underground, Carl. Yeah. Like, did you ever like... see where they did that? Like, because, not in food for vampires, but there was, like, um, blast fishing kept happening in, like, Brazil, I think it was. So what they did is they just airdropped a bunch of, like, Mother Mary statues into the water knowing that people wouldn't want to dynamite a, an image of, like, the, the Virgin Mary. <laughs> so they were, like, afraid to destroy a religi- religious icon. Religious, uh, yeah, yeah. I am curious to know what the distinction is between, you know, me n- nailing two pieces of wood together and making a cross in an emergency against a vampire and it yeah. actually being, like, a proper crucifix. I don't know what the difference is. And I do like when, like, just fiction involving vampires explores that. Like something like in uh, Baldur's Gate 3, like one of your party members, Asterion, he's a vampire. And, he talk, and you ask him, like, oh, so what's it like being a vampire? And it's, like, it's really weird. So he loses his vampire weaknesses as a result of the, the, um, uh, the plot of the game. Oh, he talks okay. about, yeah, it's, it's really weird how I can, like, you know, just walk into people's houses without being invited now. Mm. Because I was just, and you think, oh, yeah, that must have been really, that must be really weird, right? You just can't walk into houses. I wonder how that works when it comes to, like, public buildings and stuff. Like, if it, it, here's the thing does a welcome mat count as an invite yeah or like what happens when you know you get into things like businesses like businesses are public buildings a lot of the time where people are welcome to come in but at the same time they're still owned by somebody so does that owner have to like allow you in do you know what it is it means vampires are the perfect customers because they could never come in like five minutes before closing because <laughs> you're because, just like, not you're, welcome <laughs> vampire magic wouldn't let them because they could detect that they're not want, they're not welcome. <laughs> it's true. Power wise, there's still a couple of cool things just at the end here that hasn't got massive explanations, but we'll go through them because they sound interesting. We have appearance alteration. Blade seemingly possesses the ability to change to and from human form to a more monstrous state of being by force of will. After drinking the blood of Dracula, Blade gained the ability to transform into a swarm of bats, a dark mist, and a wolf. I think you should only ever travel as a swarm of bats. Like, I talk about it all the time like that Batman Begins movie. Mm. That little thing Batman has on his boot that makes him turn into a cloud of bats, you should only ever use that. Yeah, that, that thing where that just is... a tornado of bats appeared to just basically distract and scare everyone around him so he could just make a perfect escape. Batman should never not be using that. He should just be walking around as a tornado of bats at all times. Every single fight scene in every movie after that one would be ended by being a tornado of bats. Like that bit where he's like fighting the Joker would... Do you know he like runs into the building where the Joker's in like Batman's house? Mm. Threatening people with a gun. Here's the thing. You can't threaten people with a gun when your entire peripheral is a tornado of bats. <laughs> it's true. Like, you should use it all the time. You should, you should never not be... like The thing is, they shouldn't. people in Gotham shouldn't know Batman exists. <laughs> they should just know that there's a giant cloud of bats that stops crime. I say it every time. It's so stupid, right? They shouldn't even know Batman's a person. They should just be like, have you heard there's a sentient cloud of bats that beats people up and solves <laughs> yeah. crimes? The thing is, though, what happens when Bruce Wayne accidentally attends a board meeting as a tornado of bats? It's like, oh, wait, no, no, I forgot. That's a hell of a negotiation tactic, isn't it? <laughs> Just, oh, well, you want to buy my company? Turns on the bats. Just... <laughs> it's like, ah, hello, sentient cloud of bats. We would like to discuss like buying Wayne Enterprises. <laughs> 
So that's things like doing Bane's on the stock exchange and he's like fighting people. Like Cloud of Bats turns up, saves the day. I, you know I want to see that film now. I want to see the film about just a sentient Cloud of Bats that flies around <laughs> saving the day. Because how would you even fight that? When Bane's like, let's have a one on one on this bridge for the fate of Gotham. And he's just, well, it'd be a lot harder if you're fighting a tornado of bats alongside Batman. Yep. That's the thing, like, Joe, when, like, Batman, he throws, like, the uh, the pellets at him and it doesn't distract him. Mm-hmm. So it would distract him being bitten by a thousand bats. You saying, like, travel as the swarm of bats just always makes me think of, like, the DLC in Skyrim where you can become a vampire. Yep, and it's just and how you sprint. You just sprint by becoming, like, the sentient swarm of bats. It's like, yes, it's let's great. go. It, it's never not useful. Like I said, it mm. should be something Batman should use it all the time. It also says he gains winged flight, which I don't know why he needs that when he can just become a swarm of bats. But yeah, why would you need one winged form when it could be a thousand winged forms? Yeah, it just says um, his transformed state comes with the added proclivity of a bat like aviary appendages that enable him to fly around at high speed. And the more I'm listing just this secondary form he's got, it's just devil trigger, right? Yeah. Vampire trigger. Just let's go. <laughs> blade, blade trigger. <laughs> yeah. Just like, if anyone doesn't know what I mean by devil trigger, just in Devil May Cry games, you get like a second form that you can use like your, your devil trigger bar to turn into just half demon mode. Or it's like full demon mode, right? And that's essentially yeah. what he's doing. It's just, oh man. That better be in the Blade game. Oh, it's yeah, not going to be, is it? Speak. It's going to be a bad character action game. Um, I mean, it's made by the people who made like the Dishonored game, so I imagine it's going to be a lot of like sneaking around and first-person sword play, and I hope it's not, because that doesn't yeah. sound like the Blade game I want. If, unless sneaking around means it gets to be a cloud of bats. That's true. Obviously, it says that he can turn into a dark mist, and it just comes up with a gaseous form. When in his mist form, Blade is capable of entering the bodies of multiple vampires and calls them all to explode at once. Okay, I was about to say, what what advantage does being gas up over, <laughs> over bats? That what? But then again, if you just like, if a vampire screams and a thousand bats at once fly into its mouth. I mean, that's true, but is that a lot slower and more effort than just becoming a form of gas and blowing people up? It would stop people from attacking you, though. It does say a bit later down that, you know, he's got like... It, a lot of intimidation because he's well known and feared among vampires and other supernatural beings and it's like yeah but I heard about the vampire that's not weak to any vampire shit that just becomes a gas and explodes you from the inside out it still surprised me as well that I, it says like vampires in Marvel become completely powerless when exposed to religious iconography why does Blade's costume why is it not just the Pope's outfit with like a giant big cross <laughs> on his head but the fact there's no crosses like, I guess because it'd be like Oh, that'd be overtly religious, and that would be like you know off-putting. But if a single Christ, like Christian crucifix, can depower a vampire, why has mm. he not got like a thousand all over his body? He's covered in little different types of blades. Why is he not just covered in different types of religious iconography? So like, doing like Guilty Gear, is that guy who fights like the giant cross knives? Why is he not <laughs> fighting with them? Why is he essentially not like Simon Belmont? Just running yeah. around with like holy water in all his pockets. It makes no sense. Like, he should have a fucking super soaker filled with holy water. <laughs> I mean, that would be pretty OP. No, do you should get? Do you know, like, have you ever seen those like, um, those big like flowers you put in your garden that you put a hose pipe on and they wave around? No, <laughs> get one of them full of holy water. He just, his first move is to like turn into a swarm of bats, put that in the middle of the room, and then just turn it on. Like, let's go. I just think he should just fly directly into people's mouths as the bats. Oh god! Well, he does it as a mist. That's even more powerful, Carl. It, it, it sucked that one. Like, it's imagine if like Spider Man's like, "Hey, bet Blake, can you cover me for a minute?" And then it's like Spider Man comes back. Crime has dropped eight hundred percent. What happened? <laughs> what every criminal heard? If you commit a crime, bats try and fly into your ass. They just they, it's not worth it. Oh god! It's like the mask, isn't it? Where the mask just stops uh, that group of like thugs by just making one of them like give birth to a monkey out of his anus and it's like yeah, yeah that that stopped me doing crime i don't think that's the mass i think that's like bruce almighty is that bruce almighty he's bruce almighty but he's just a similar character similar yeah, levels of power just jim carrey doing like godlike things yeah hey, did that monkey just come out your crack man I couldn't remember. I just remember Jim Carrey doing that to people, and it's like that's all I need to remember is that would make me intimidated by Jim Carrey if I knew that he could just make me give birth to him. We do that in real life, right? Just fear this man. Tell me more about Blade, though. Well, Blade can perform self exorcism, apparently. (laughs) 
Um, he's Surely able... he just looks in the mirror. Oh, he can't. He just like says, hey, I'm Blade. Well, apparently he's capable of forcibly removing possessing entities from his own body, such as demons, and he can also maintain control over his body while he is possessed anyway. What's the point in fucking possessing him then? Yeah, I guess like maybe some people don't realise that and try and get the one up on him and say, ha ha, I've possessed you. He's like, ah, gand. Also, Mr. Vampire who possessed me, do you realise I have garlic for breakfast? What? No! <laughs> What happens when you possess him and then he just turns into mist? <laughs> yeah. Flies in different directions. <laughs> he does possess some skill with magic, though rarely displayed. He knows one spell that allows him to trap and contain vampires inside a mystical artifact. It's like, yeah, if, if, if Blade, of all people, needed to know one fucking spell, it's that, yeah. isn't it? Admittedly, that's the one spell you need when you're hunting vampires, right? Yeah. It's what, just more, a... what more do you need? It's the Master Roshi tech, isn't it? Of like, he's got yeah. one gimmick, and his gimmick is just being able to just pop anything inside of a bottle. It's like, well, when you know that, what else do you need? Like, he literally goes to the Tournament of Power with like god level entities and can trap them inside a bottle. The fact that Mafuba works on like, I think they do it to like Zamasu in one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have worked. They just mess it up. And he's like, yeah, they, they literally could take a Supreme Kai, which is like a god among gods, Put him in and a just trap him in a bottle. Like, when you've got that tech, do you really need anything else? Like, does Blade need anything other than just walking into a room and just mafubering you into a bottle? Like, yeah. get that tech on the go. Oh, man. Carl. Yes. It seems that you and Blade have something in common. What is it? So I guess we can just end on this piece of trivia that I haven't read fully, but... Okay, it this does trivia say, about Blade? This trivia about Blade that says, Blade was a fan of police procedural television shows. Yes! <laughs> which he watched while whittling steaks. I do the same thing. I, just, I watch those while I'm reading about Blade, so come on. <laughs> he also enjoys police procedural novels as well as being a fan of the novel I Am Legend. This I Am Legend, the vampires in that are so fucking weird because everyone knows about the movie. People don't mm -hmm. realize in the books, like the vampires know where the guy lives and they sit outside his house <laughs> and they just like call him a dick. And they just, because they just know where he lives and they just sit outside his house telling him to come outside so they can beat him up. Do you th uh, what do you think is funnier to Blade? The fact that they do that to the character in the book or the fact that they can't get into his house without being invited and he's sitting there like, I could get in. Well, that's it. They try to get in. like they To get him to come out, they get like sexy lady vampires to get naked and say, hey, come get some. And he's like, <laughs> it almost worked. It's tempting, but I also know there's a lot of other vampires out there. Yeah, that's like a real part of the original book and it's like, what the fuck is this? It's also stated, Carl that Blade doesn't like the works of Anne Rice and would only recommend them as a cure to insomnia. Uh, so he doesn't like interview with a vampire. Well, do you think he just reads not. a lot of the vampire books and he's like, man, they got nothing right? Or, or does he think, yeah, I would also lure them out with sexy vampire women. It'd work. We've got a couple more pieces of trivia here. Just Blade's patented black leather trench coat once belonged to Wolverine because, of course... Lucas, how tall is Blade again? He's 6'2". Six, 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 and how tall is Wolverine? <laughs> He's like 5'2", right? <laughs> yeah. What does that look like when Wolverine's wearing it? Because it's a trench on... He's yeah. a full trench on Blade. Yeah. What does that look like when Wolverine's wearing it? They didn't think that through, did they? Do you reckon that's why he traded it to him? <laughs> Just like, oh, it didn't, I didn't, didn't fit. Sorry. <laughs> Initially, Blade was wearing like trunks as jacket. <laughs> he just gave it to Wolverine. To be fair, I'd never get rid of Trunks' jacket. That's some no. fit right there. Instead of, oh. like, Capsule Court, though, it just says, fuck vampires. Blade considers some of the best music albums of all time to be Mal Davis's Bitches Brew and Beyonce's Lemonade. It's not just... even the best Beyonce album. I mean, are you, uh, <laughs> you a big fan of the new Country album? Not really, no. <laughs> I thought you were going down that route. <laughs> I, I do like the review I saw of it, where she did a cover of Jolene. And just like the top, like, rig there was just a one word review someone put in like a magazine of, like, Beyonce, nobody wants Jay Z. And it's just, that's it. It's like, nobody wants Jay Z. Why are you acting like people do? I would argue they're still one of the, like the most power couples of power couples. So they are indeed, yeah, but just they're not doing anything wrong. 
Lemonade's not a great album. That was clearly like, you know, a joke written in when that album came out. Mm -hmm. It certainly is like one of those things where it's like, "Mm, maybe that didn't age particularly well. Maybe Beyonce's got some better songs, but it's still nice to know that he's a Beyonce fan. It'd just be really funny if he was like a fan of just like, but like Calton in the Fresh Prince is like just he has like really white tastes like he likes like Tom Jones and stuff. If like oh, Blade I, was I, just listening to like Tom Jones, he's just listening to like fucking Taylor Swift instead. <laughs> it's like you know that really cringy bit in Blade Trinity where they say like is it like Kate Becky sale or whatever? It's like she likes to listen to music as she hunts, and you see her on an iPod making the playlist of techno. Oh no! And it's so fucking cringy. Oh, what do you reckon he's got on his iPod? Do you reckon he just, like, runs around listening to S Club 7? I reckon he wouldn't listen to anything, because it's a fucking stupid idea to, like, block off one of your senses when you're fighting vampires. I mean, is it, though, when you blade? Because he's basically got the win button against vampires. That's why it's his niche. He does, but that's, like, why that bit's so fucking stupid in that movie, where she says, like, Mm. she listens to music. It's like, so you cut off one of your primary senses for, like, manoeuvring around the dark when you're fighting vampires. Cool. How have you survived again? And I think even Blade calls them out of, you're all fucking idiots. Why do you think you can hunt vampires? <laughs> like, he, he reams out like Ryan Reynolds. He wears like the signs like, hello, my name is fuck you. And Blade's mm-hmm. like, you're an idiot. These are vampires. Don't mess with them. They will kill you. Shut up. Yeah, the one person they, they can't kill is fucking Blade. Because he's just got like a 10-0 matchup against them, Carl. He's like, oh, but he has vampires, yeah. It's, it's a rough matchup. If I was vampires, I'd stop fighting Blade. <laughs> Do they have a choice? Because he's just hunting them down, Carl. Like, please stop. Just every corner they turn, there's just a form of mist ready to explode them. Like I said, he's a bit stupid, though. He could probably do more. I mean, from the sounds of it, yeah. Like I said, just put garlic in the fucking Hudson River. It's all the water just has garlic in it. I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind that. Just like, in terms of cooking, if I could have like a garlic tap where just like garlic water comes out for the sake of cooking, I'd take it. Yeah. So you should be doing all actually. You should be doing all sorts of nonsense, right? I mean, I I still don't understand why he just doesn't wield crucifixes everywhere. Because it'd look um it'd be off putting. It would be, but would Blade care? No. That's the thing, it makes no sense that he doesn't do it in the it makes sense why the artists don't do it, but if it is a weakness of the vampires, it makes no sense to not just absolutely cover yourself in crucifixes. Mm-hmm. Like, Unless maybe it- they say like Oh, it only works if you're a true believer. But how would you not be a true believer if you know that it works? If anything, I'd be way more of a true believer if the moment I pulled out a crucifix, it immediately made all vampires basically comatose. Yeah, and it, d- it does say specifically as well, it's just crucifixes, right? Or is it, it all religious just, icon? It, it does say crucifixes. I'm not like, sure whether it said like uh, all religious icon. I like saying, like, would like a menorah scare them off? Or, like, you know, something from, like, the Sikh religion? Or is it specifically um, the it does Christian specifically... mythology? Oh, no, it says that he's immune to the effects of religious icons such as crucifixes, whereas vampires are rendered almost powerless when confronted by them. So that implies that it's not just crucifixes that would work. It's just anything that is, like, of innately divine origin. Potentially, we- yes. In which case, then, he should have, like, every fucking religious symbol on him. Mm-hmm. Do you know that scene in The Mummy? Where just like Benny has like the big fucking just medallion of every religious iconography you can do. <laughs> just in case. Just in case. That's yeah. not what Blade should be. Like one of them's gotta work, right? It, it should do, right? Yeah. Like again, for the sake of yeah, the comic artists and stuff, I understand why they don't do it. But in universe it makes no sense why Blade isn't just like from fucking head to toe just strapped in all different forms of religious iconography. It does make it like very funny as well. Because it's like that must cause some fucking arguments, right? Hmm. Of, like, which religion's right? Well, it's like, can we We can see if Scientology's real, because does, does, like, do my, my thetans protect me from vampires? Oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> and that's the thing, like, what's the extent of it? Yeah. Does that mean, like, Tom Cruise could fight a vampire? I don't know. Could Scientologists fight vampires, Lucas? We don't know. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe we'll find out in another episode of Wiki Weekends. Maybe we'll look into Scientology and see whether it's got any usefulness against vampires. I do know when I researched it for an article once, there's um, one of the the selling points they use in general like, literature they don't release to the public that got leaked. Mm-hmm. One of them yeah. is, you'll be able to cook a hamburger with your mind. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> that actually sounds like a pretty good ability. <laughs> like, maybe that's like one tier, and then the tier above is, can use your powers to fight vampires. That's the thing. I found that actually, that's actually... 
really useful way of onboarding people because it doesn't sound too crazy, mm-hmm. but it does sound useful. It is, sounds very fucking useful to be able to cook things with your mind. No, just that it says specifically a hamburger. But only a hamburger. Only a hamburger, yeah. Right, okay. You There's also know when about a pot's hamburgers. about to pop. You gotta, you gotta get, if you get to that level of operating theta now, you're ready. You're super I mean, powered. Ironically, the one time I went into um, a Scientology like place, yeah. you know, like one of their recruitment centers, was in Hamburg. I just saw one on the street and was like, we have to go inside. I'm we so need, curious. We need to know. We need to know, and they basically told us nothing other than, hey, you can, like, donate and join. It's like, oh, okay. Ooh, no, thank you. Oh, dear, but if you would like us to join Scientology, then there's a place that they <laughs> no. can go, Carl, right? No, do you know what? Speaking of donating money, go to our Patreon. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I guess if you donate enough, maybe we'll become vampires. Maybe we'll be vampires. Oh, we didn't even make the joke! God damn! <laughs> the joke was right there. Oh dear, oh dear, but if you enjoyed this episode, remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, and let us know what your preferred methodology of taking out a vampire in a stupid way would be. And like I said, just walk like do you like Jesus when he carries like the big cross on his back? Just do that. <laughs> oh. Just imagine the vampire like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> just are like, they just seeing like I don't actually know what to do. You just how don't do you count approach with it. it. You just yeah, don't. how do I count with this? Like do you, like, you don't. Like Astaroth in like Soul Calloway wheels like the big hammer. Mm. That was like Just that. A giant a bit, crucifix. It's a instead. big crucifix, yeah. Oh dear. Oh, you have like um, uh, just like the Star of David as like ninja stars. Oh god. Just... Right. On that <laughs> note, Carl, we're yes. gonna leave it there. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> this is getting into some day. dangerous territory. We are. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>